Greetings, Lunarians and Brigandine fans. Welcome back to the Empire. I am your host, Bagos Lunari. I hope you Rune Knights are doing awesome today. Ready for the Brigandine Basics Guide Part 3. Hope you enjoy. Once again, I'm going to be putting all of my guides in the top right-hand corner of every single guide video, just in case you can't find the playlist. It is in the top right-hand corner. Check that out. Save it to your list. That way you can be updated on every single guide that I'm going to come out with in the future. If you have not seen part one or part two of the basics videos, do not worry. You can still watch this without needing to know about the previous videos, but I definitely heavily encourage you watch all three before continuing into the later guides that I'm going to be putting forth. Anyways, today's topic is going to be about quest rewards and class changes. The quest rewards is pretty straightforward. It's not going to go into a ton of in-depth detail. I will be creating a guide with in-depth detail on questing once the game officially releases. But since I only have the demo right now, we can at least do the basics of questing. So that won't take long. The next is class changes. Class changes is probably going to take the majority of our time today, but it's not really too far in depth we're going to go over basic class changes obviously but you'll see a more advanced guide from me eventually about class changes let's start with questing here we go in this tutorial you will learn about quests as they are a great way to level up your knights and monsters let's go ahead and select quests from the base menu you can put this on any base that you want to each base is going to be different for quests going down here we can see a list of all the knights that are available for questing there are two categories for quests, exploration quests for obtaining items or monsters, and training quests for earning experience. When you go on an exploration quest, you can acquire items, equipment, or monsters on these particular quests. The success and drop rates will vary depending on the dispatch knight's level and class. This means that certain classes will want to go to certain areas. If you look at the right hand side of the screenshot, there are two locations within this castle questing site. You have Arn Forest and Hills of Corral. We're gonna get into how you can tell that certain classes prefer certain locations, as well as how to increase your chances of gaining a reward by leveling and upping your class. Besides the exploration quest, there is simply training quest. You can acquire experience for the knights and monsters in the dispatch troop. This is huge for low level knights and monsters. You definitely wanna make use of this as much as possible if you can afford to put a whole bunch of low level monsters on a low level knight. That way you can get a ton of experience and put them into battle after maybe a couple quests or three. In the screenshot, you can see that Pick, the third knight down, is only level one. This is a prime example of a knight that you want to send on these particular quests. Quests are divided into exploration and training categories. Choose one of the troops stationed at your base and select dispatch to begin. You will select a destination from the list on the right to view available exploration quest locations which are Thailand Valley, Plains of Delza, and the Training Grounds. Depending on your current base, different quests with different rewards may be available. Destinations with a higher outlook have a better chance of yielding rare rewards. The flashing Rune Knight icon indicates that there is a Rune Knight located here. You may be able to recruit them if you encounter them on a quest. This is also very huge. If you see a glowing gold knight icon, you want to try to prioritize that for your army because in order to win the game, you need additional knights. Whether that be for defense or offense, it's a requirement in order to beat the entire game. A quest's outlook will change depending on your knight's level and class, and the higher the outlook, the better rewards your knight can find during a quest. If we go down to Ariana here, we can dispatch her to either Thailand Valley or Plains of Delza. If you notice, her outlook is much better in Thailand Valley than it is Plains of Delza. If I move between them, and you look at her level and class on the left hand side, you'll notice that her class gets an X on the Plains of Delza. This means her particular class, the Temple Knight, does not have good affinity with this location. But if I change to Thailand Valley, you can see that the class gains an up arrow. This means the Temple Knight does have good affiliation with that location. So we're going to send her to Thailand Valley. You've now dispatched one of your knights to the Thailand Valley. Brendan has good compatibility with the Delza Plains by dispatching him there. The Brendan is a knight class, as you can tell. If you look at Thailand Valley, knights do not prefer to go to this location. So if you go down the Plains of Delza, they have better affinity with this location. The last troop on this list is at a low level, so it's best to send troops like this on training quests to help them get stronger. We explained this before. Training quests let knights and monsters gain experience in a safe environment. 
Quests like this are ideal for monsters you've only recently summoned, as these monsters may not be battle ready yet. Every time you summon a monster, they start at level 1, as you can imagine. Go down to pick. As you can tell between the uh, locations, he has an X on both level and class, so he doesn't belong in any of these uh, locations right here. So we definitely want to go to the training grounds for him, at least for now. All your troops are now dispatched until the end of the current season. There are a few other things you should be aware of when it comes to dispatching troops on quests. Troops away on quests will be absent from their base during the attack phase. This means they will be unable to fend off enemy attacks or invade enemy bases. So definitely make sure your adjacent castles to enemy countries are well defended before sending people on quests. If you have a solid team of three rune knights and their monsters, that is ideal for a good defense. So after you're done, go ahead and end the phase so we can look at the quest rewards. The quest rewards will not happen until we complete a full round, so we have to complete the attack phase first. So we're going to skip through and get to the next organization phase. Quest results will happen before. So as you can tell, Ariana has a successful quest. She actually had what's known as a great quest. There's three levels. There's a good, which is one star, a great, which is two star, and expert, which is three star. Because she had a great quest, she was able to come back with a two star item. Brendan also had a great quest, came back with a two star item. The results screen shows the rewards acquired this season. These may include items or equipment, all of which have their own rarity rating from one star to three star, which again is good, great, and expert. Keep in mind, you can also recruit additional monsters this way. You may get a good, which is a tier one monster. You may get a great, which is a tier two monster starting at level 10. Or if you're really, really lucky, you may get an expert monster quest, which is a tier three level 20 monster. That is huge. If you can get that, my God, you just got yourself an awesome, awesome unit. Anyways. So as you can see in the training grounds, Pick had an excellent training session. If he had a good training session, it would be 100 experience, 200 for great, and 300 of course as you can see here for excellent. Training quests will display experience gained instead of items, and rune knights or monsters that gain the necessary experience will immediately level up. Keep in mind, this 300 experience is not divided amongst all of the units there. It is actually giving 300 experience to every single unit, the leader, and each monster. Also, one little note, if you look at Ariana in the top left-hand corner, notice how there is a gold knight icon next to her name. This means that she was successful in recruiting a new knight for your country. And here's a level up screen right here for Pix Troop. You can cycle through this on each monster. You can also skip this, which, you know, eventually you'll probably end up doing anyways because it takes forever to get through this sometimes, especially if you send in a whole bunch of uh, units on training quests. So, but I'll just power through here so we can see all the stat gross. You can see everything in green if you um, want to micromanage these stuff. Uh, so by all means, go ahead and do that. And a new knight has been recruited by Ariana. When you encounter a rune knight during a quest, they will be recruited as a new knight. Knights are essential for expanding and defending your territory. Sound familiar? Take advantage of quests with a rune knight icon and be proactive in dispatching troops for these quests. Now, when you recruit a new knight, they do each have their own little story arc that you can go through. It's not going to be a simple one screen like this and they join you. There is a story arc to each new knight. So definitely read up on the dialogue and enjoy the story uh, with each freelance knight. It's really, really interesting. And legit, that's all there is to questing, folks. There really is nothing uh, incredibly complicated about it. There is an in-depth guide that I will be going into later on for each castle and how to optimize your questing. But as far as performing it, it's very, very simple and gets you a ton of good rewards. Please take advantage of this every single round. If you have knights to spare, that is. Okay, here's where it gets really, really interesting. You guys are going to dig this a lot in your organization phase. It's not going to take a long time to go through, but definitely follow me. Pay attention. This is very important if you want to optimize your army. This tutorial will cover how to change a unit's class. First select class from the menu, 
we notice that there is a one right there which tells us how many units are able to class up each unit has a class their job or species gain experience through battles or quests to raise a unit's level if the unit is a knight the proficiency tier will also increase units can change classes after fulfilling conditions such as reaching a certain level or proficiency tier raising certain stats or obtaining a specific item there are six proficiency tiers a unit's proficiency tier increases by one for each level a unit gains reaching tier five or master will allow a unit to carry over certain spells and abilities when changing their class spells and abilities that can be carried over have a master icon that will change color once the unit reaches the max proficiency tier select a unit on the class screen to see their current class and the hierarchy of future classes so we can tell on the fighter type class we see that the tier one is fighter the second tier being knight and the third tier being paladin that's a typical class up scenario if you have no intentions of cross classing which we'll be getting into in here in a bit you'll simply go from fighter going up to tier two at level 10 to knight and once the knight reaches level 20 you can tier up to tier three or paladin however you can get a ton more variety out of your classes if you are able to cross class which is what we're going to talk about right now so in red text classes cannot be reverted to a lower class in the same class type so once you commit to tier two you cannot revert back to tier one once you go to tier three you cannot revert back to tier two etc but changing to a new type will allow a unit to start from the lowest class in that type as you can see per the example on the left hand side the knight is able to cross class to a barbarian type from tier two knight to tier one barbarian notice how the knight's proficiency is at level five this means he can carry over any magic spells that are able to be mastered by the knight into the barbarian class i'll tell you right now that the knight gets a heal spell for example you can carry over a heal spell from a knight if they complete their proficiency to a barbarian class so the barbarian class can now have a heal which they generically do not have there's a lot of experimentation with this and it's really really cool to see what kind of builds you can come up with definitely hit me up in the comment section if you have explored all the classes so far and figure out what you think might be a really good build to have i will of course be sharing my builds in later videos and stuff like that but we'll get into that later anyways at the bottom there's two notes first one units returning to a class type will continue from whatever their tier was before changing classes so this means you do not lose your proficiency as knight if you go to barbarian if you decide to go back to knight from barbarian you will continue at level five proficiency as a knight the second note some class types split into two paths. In this case, you can only choose one path. Next slide, the first one is a little recap here. You cannot change to a class that is lower than your current class. We talked about that earlier. Secondly, you cannot change to your current class. Why would you even do that in the first place? Makes no sense. The third one, the up icon indicates you can change your class. Select Paladin as your new class and press the A button to confirm. Notice that a lock icon is displayed if you are unable to change class with the conditions you still need to meet grayed out. Per the example, in this case, your proficiency is insufficient. So in order to class up to a berserker, you need five proficiency as a barbarian. Now we can finally see it in action. Next, we will try changing a rude knight's class. Select Shizzler to begin. Select him, he's currently a knight. When a knight upgrades to a new class, they can carry over their current proficiencies. We talked about this earlier as well. Changing to a different class type may require that certain conditions be met first. Some classes have different progression paths for male and female units. Let's take a look at how to change to a different class type. Select mage type from the list above. Going down here. You can compare different classes stats before making a change. In this case, the current class Knight is on the left, and the new class Mage is on the right. Stats that are higher than your current class will be displayed in green, while lower stats will be displayed in red. So we can already gather from this that the HP is significantly lower, but the MP is significantly increased. Defense goes down, so it does attack and strength, but intelligence goes up. So before we move on to the next tab, notice the requirements to go over to a Mage. If I did not have at least 60 intelligence, I would not be able to change to the mage class. Moving on to the next tab, if you press the shoulder button R, you can cycle through the tabs on the top between stats, skill, magic, and abilities. We're gonna cycle to the magic tab over here. 
This screen shows the different magic techniques each class can learn. Note the heal skill in blue has the master icon next to it. Skills like this, which have reached their maximum proficiency, can be carried over to a new class type. Skills that haven't been mastered yet will be grayed out to show they cannot be carried over. Proficiency is a stat exclusive to knights and increases by one every time they level up. A skill is mastered once it reaches a proficiency tier of 5. Mastered abilities and magic can be carried over to a new class when changing classes. Use this to your advantage to make your knights more powerful than ever. But before we go into the next step, you can already tell on the far right looking at the mage class that this has a ton of variety. Carrying over a heal to a mage that does primarily damage spells is really, really useful for variety. If you need an extra heal or extra offensive spells in your arsenal, look into cross-classing your rune knights. It can be very, very pivotal in order to turn the tide of any battle. And now we're going to commit and change Shizzler's class to mage from knight. Shows you a quick little glimpse of what the model will look like after you change, and we will commit. And Shizzler is now a tier 1 mage. The unit's class has now changed. Switching to a new class type is a great way to acquire new skills to make your troops more versatile. Be aware that once you have upgraded to a new class, you cannot return to lower ranking versions of that same class. So you probably already gathered this, but if you can get 5 proficiency as a mage, you can revert back to Shizzler's knight class with mage offensive spells. So not only will the knight have just a heal, but he will also have flame, power, and acceleration. It creates really nice variety for a knight if they are unable to be efficient in the front line for a few turns. This ensures that they always have something to do in order to gain experience. Because literally every action that you take gains you a certain amount of experience. Anyways, moving on, we're going to get into monster class changes now. If we go back to the unit screen, we can tell that we have one monster that can be classed up, which is this imp down here at level 10. Monsters capable of changing class will have up displayed on their icon. Most monsters will gain access to a new class after reaching a certain level. Others may require specific items to unlock their new classes. Going down here to the imp at level 10, we have an up icon for class up. Process is largely the same for monsters as it is for knights. Monsters can only upgrade to new versions of their current class. Like with knights, you can compare stats first, with the current class displayed on the left and the new class on the right. Changing to a higher class means better stats and combat power. Changing classes can also increase a monster's magic cost and upkeep mana. So keep an eye on your magic pool and mana reserve. This is basically saying that they become more expensive to hold on your Rune Knight's troop roster, and they also are more expensive to keep within your entire army. Every single monster that you own as a country has an upkeep cost to your mana reserve. There is a status screen in the game that does show you your mana upkeep, your current mana reserve, and what income you will be gaining for mana each season. I will definitely be showcasing that screen in a later video, so definitely stay tuned for that guide. So once again, we can tab over by pressing the shoulder buttons. We're going to press R, tab over to magic, and we can see new magic skills being learned from the gremlin. Changing from imp to gremlin will give this unit access to new spells. Different monsters learn different spells and abilities, so experiment and bring out your monster's best qualities. React is one of the gremlin's best skills. It can give a unit two actions in the same turn. That is a pivotal, pivotal skill. For example, if you want to move a mage and cast magic in the same turn, React is superb for that type of playstyle. It's definitely expensive, so make sure you use it sparingly. So we're going to go ahead and commit to the class up change here. Two gremlin, very pink gremlin. <laughs> A little bigger there, so let's go ahead and change. And it becomes Tier 2 Gremlin. This monster actually takes the place of the, uh, the Pixie in the previous game, the OG game. It used to be a Pixie evolving into a Fairy, for example, and they have the exact same spells. But now they're Imps, so, which is fine. I'm still so happy that they kept like the original spell roster for this type of monster here. So, pretty cool. And that's legit all the steps in the tutorial for class changes. I know it went into a little bit of depth. If you do have any questions on class changes especially, please leave me a comment in the pinned message below at the top of the comment section so you guys can have easy access to it. Congratulations, Rune Knights. You have made it through the Brigandine Basics tutorial series. I really hope you enjoyed all three videos and got some good insight out of all three. 
please leave me comments. Please leave me questions. You can see the pinned messages on the top of the comment section in every single one of those videos. Please make use of it. Not only will I answer your questions, but a lot of the veterans will also be answering your questions as well. Once again, if you have missed any of the basics tutorials or any future guides, I'm leaving that in the top right hand corner of every single one of my guide videos for Brigandine. So definitely get your feet wet with the demo on these three guide videos that I've given you so far. I have to say, I am heavily, heavily impressed by the Discord server of Brigandine. You can find that in the link in the description below. Everybody is welcome. Please, please join if you are interested. Blowing up every day and people are contributing heavily to this new game that is coming out. We're talking stat growth panels, class change experimentation, power leveling experimentation. People are going ham on just the demo, so it's a really, really awesome community to be a part of. If you are interested in joining, again, I will leave the Brigandine Discord server link in the description. Check it out. You can find me in there, of course, as well. I'm chatting it up every day with everybody in there, so by all means, if you want to chat with me on my downtime when I'm not making guides and stuff like that, you are more than welcome. I would love to have a conversation with you. Other Brigandine resources you can check out are the fan website, which is run by Veracity Trigger. It is the Brigandine engine website. Check that out for sure. You can also find Happenet's main website of Brigandine The Legend of Renercia, which contains character bios and screenshots of different types of uh, organization mechanics. There's a whole bunch of stuff over there, so go ahead and check out their main website if you want additional info on the game. One last thing to note, you do still have time. It is currently May the 12th. You have until May 31st to pre-order your Brigandine Legend of Renercia Collector's Edition or Standard Edition physical copy. I will leave Limited Run Games website in the description as well. Go over there, search for Brigandine, and put your pre-order in before it is gone. If you want to go digital, they do have the Standard Edition available on the Nintendo eShop. Definitely check that out as well. The official release date is again June 25th, and I hope we can survive that long waiting. <laughs> Congratulations, Rune Knights, once again for completing the Brigandine Basics tutorial series. I am your host, Vago Sonari. Please look out for more advanced guides in the future, and I will see you in the next guide video, LP series, or in the Brigandine Discord server. I'll see you on the battlefield, Rune Knights. Peace out. Bye.